Hi you guys, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, I would like to take the time out to say welcome and hope to see you again and again. Well, last week I was going to the supermarket and it was, a, it was cold, so I had the heater on. And as I was driving there, all of a sudden steam started to come um, out of my windshield on the inside. And, you know, of course, it, uh, that doesn't usually happen. So I figured it was my heater core. So I looked up some uh, stomatics to see what it needs to be done. And there was nothing I could find that looked to where I could understand what needs to be done. So what I did, I just went ahead and just got under there and just started taking parts off to get to the heater core. If you don't know what a heater core looks like, it looks like this. The other thing I noticed when I was videotaping it's, is that it's going to be hard for you to understand what you're seeing as I'm shooting the video. So if you don't know what a heater core does or where it's at, let me just draw it here on this whiteboard and show you. It'll be a lot easier for you to understand where it's at, how it works, and how you go about taking it out and replacing it. Once we're done on the whiteboard, you'll have a better understanding what's going on underneath when we go under there. Also, I have to apologize. There's not a lot of video, but there's enough to give you a basic idea of what's going on. Again, it's really not that hard once you see the video. So let's get to work. So like you saw in the picture, here's a heater core. Your heater core is like a radiator. It has hot water going in and circulates out. As you control the fan speed from the dash and temperature, essentially you're controlling the amount of air flowing through the heater core as shown. Okay, here's a cross section of a car. Can you tell by my drawing skills I used to be a criminal sketch artist? Here's the seat. Here's your dash. Here's your engine. As you know, as your engine runs, it gets hot, which creates hot water. The hot water flows from the engine to your heater core, circulates in and out and back into the engine and circulates. Okay, picture yourself sitting down in the car and inside the dash is this box, this rectangular box that's inside your dash that goes from the driver's side to the passenger side. What I'm drawing is the rectangular box on the passenger side, that end. Inside this box on the passenger side, in the dash, is where the heater core is at and it goes through the firewall. Hot and cold air are contained in this box. You can see how the air flows through the heater core. To get to the heater core, you're going to have to remove part of the rectangular box on the end. You'll see two screws in the front. Once you take off the screws, you can remove the cover. And your heater core is exposed. The end of the box does not have equal sides. It's triangular in shape, as shown. It's skinnier in the back and wider in the front. As you're removing the cover, you'll notice to the right, there's a computer. You'll notice two clips that are closest to the firewall, and then there's one clip towards the front. You can push back that clip and it'll unsnap, and you can move the computer out and move it downward towards the floor, towards the floor mats. Get it out of the way. Be careful with the wires not to damage any wires. Now you can start maneuvering that cover out of the way so you can start to remove your heater. Okay, now let's take a look at the patient. One of the tools you want to use is a mirror. That helps when you look underneath there. The first thing we're going to do is take off this bottom cover. There's about two or three screws you're going to remove. There's no screws in the back. Some are screws and some are a clip. 
You're going to have to take a small screwdriver as shown and put the screwdriver behind the clip and push it out. It looks like a square nail. As soon as you got it loose, pull it out and remove the cover. Okay, now that we got the cover off, just set it aside for now. Now we're going to remove the glove box. This is pretty easy. All you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. All you need to do is remove six screws. Carefully slide the box out. Okay, disconnect these wires here on the left side. In the back, you'll see a yellow wire. Don't disconnect the wire, just disconnect it from the glove box. Set the glove box aside. Now we got a better view of what's going on inside. Okay, now you're going to remove this one screw where the arrow's pointed at. Okay, now just around the right there, you'll see another screw. Take that one off. You can't see it here, but there's another one. If you go straight down, there's another screw in approximately the same position just below. Remove that one also. Okay, now you're going to take off these control arms. There's a couple of ways you can take them off. Study them and pop it off. Right behind it is a plug. Unplug that plug that powers that control arm. Do the same thing on the bottom. You have another one on the bottom. Unsnap the rod. In the back there's another plug. Unplug it. Okay, now you have everything removed. You should be able to take that cover out. You can't take the cover out through the glove box. It's got to go through the bottom of the floor. But before you do that, you're going to have to move the computer on the right side, as shown here in the red arrows. You'll see two clips in the back. That's going to lock it in, but there's one in front right about here. That one you move forward towards the passenger and it unsnaps. Once you unsnap it, slide the computer out and move it downward out of the way. Now you can remove the cover. Here you can see the cover is already removed. You can see the two holes where the heater core goes through and the one little center hole where it indexes the heater core. You can also see the groove where the cover gets captured when you put it back in. When you put that cover in, it's got to go in the groove. See where the two arrows are at. Like I said, this end cover is removed. The heater core will be sitting right here where the red arrow's at and it's going to move outward like the red arrow looks like. When you put it back in, it's going to go straight in this way, the way the arrow is pointed now. But before we can remove the heater core, we have to remove the heater hoses on the opposite side of the firewall. As we look closer in the engine compartment by the firewall on the passenger side, you'll see two heater hoses with clips on them. If your hoses have been changed, you'll see that they have these factory clips on there. You're going to have to get a special tool to remove them or some channel locks. It's a little tough, but can be done. Once you have the hoses removed, you can pull the heater core out. Once you put the new heater core back in through the firewall and you're ready to connect the hoses, before you connect the hoses, change out the clips to some regular hose clamps that you can use a screwdriver on. It's much easier. Okay, now that you have your new hose clamps on, you're more than halfway done now. All you gotta do is just put everything back together. See, I told you it wasn't that hard. The only bad part about it is that you have to work on your back a lot, but it's worth it. it saved me a lot of money. Of course, before working on this, you're gonna need some towels, maybe even some pans to collect any antifreeze that falls in the car. You're also gonna have to drain your antifreeze from your engine too. Once you got everything back together, don't forget to put the fluids back in. Start the car, make sure that everything is working properly and there's no leaks. And then don't forget to double check your fluid level for the next day or so. All right, I hope this video helped you. I certainly enjoyed making it and I certainly, of course, enjoyed saving some money. Anyway, don't forget to check out my other videos. I've got a lot of how-to videos and some more Cadillac videos also. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and please hit the bell. That way you'll know when I make a new video. I try to make one about once a week. And don't forget to stay tuned for my new website. I'll be unveiling it in the next months or so. It'll have some really cool stuff in there that you may want to check out. Well, until then, can't wait to see you in my next video. We'll see you. Bye.